Knowing how to properly round numbers is extremely important in math and in chemistry. In fact, if you round incorrectly, this can cause you to lose points on your exam and we both don't want that to happen. So let's go over the rules for rounding. When rounding a number, always look at the number to the right of where you wanna stop to determine whether to round up or down. For example, if we wanted to round 3.2 to the nearest whole number, and note a whole number has no decimals, we would start with looking at the number to the right of three, which is two. And if this number is less than five, we will round down. Our answer in this case is three. If we wanted to round 3.5 to the nearest whole number, we would look at the number to the right of three, so five, and if a number is five or greater, then we will round up. Our answer in this case is four. In a math class, you would be asked to round to the nearest whole number or a specific decimal place like the tenths, hundredths, thousandths place, and so on. But in chemistry, you are asked to round to the appropriate amount of significant figures or sig figs. What I'm about to teach you is going to keep popping up this entire semester because your final answer for any chemistry problem has to have the correct number of significant figures. That being said, let's go over the rules for significant figures. Rule one, any number that is not zero is significant. For example, every single one of these numbers are non-zero numbers, so they all count as sig figs. There are five significant figures. Rule two, zeros that are in the middle of non-zero numbers are significant. This example has two zeros in the middle of non-zero numbers, the five and the three. So all of these numbers count as sig figs. There are four significant figures. Rule three, any zeros after the decimal are significant. In this case, there are three zeros after the decimal, so these count as significant. All these numbers count as sig figs. There are four significant figures. Rule four, any coefficients in scientific notation are significant. Remember, a coefficient refers to the number in front. We do not look at this portion of our scientific notation. So there are only two significant figures for this example. Rule five, any leading or beginning zeros are not significant. These leading zeros do not count as sig figs, only these non-zero numbers count. There are three significant figures. Rule six, any zeros within a number that has no decimal are not significant. For example, if we had 7,000, only the seven would count as a sig fig and the zeros would not count. There is only one significant figure. Okay, go ahead and try this question out. Round this number to two sig figs, go for it. Okay, if you said 34, you just made one of the most common mistakes and I want you to think of this in terms of money. If you were promised $341, but given $34, would you think these numbers were the same? Yeah, probably not. So make sure not to completely change the value of the original number. The correct answer here is 340. We found this by seeing that we need to round it to sig figs, but we will look at the number to the right of those two sig figs and round down because one is less than five. We get 340, and remember this zero is not significant because there's no decimal shown. We could have also written the number in scientific notation and rounded it to two sig figs. So 3.4 times 10 to the second would also be correct. If you didn't get that one right, don't worry. Here's another chance to redeem yourself. Go ahead and try this question out on your own. For this question, we know that two sig figs stops here at the five, but we need to look at the number to the right of this, and since it is greater than five, we will round up. So round the five up to six to get 7,600. Our zeros again do not count as significant, only the seven and the six do. So our answer is 7,600. We could have also written the number in scientific notation and rounded to two sig figs. So 7.6 times 10 to the third would have also been correct. Now let's go over the significant figure rules for the following operations, starting with adding and subtracting. When adding or subtracting numbers, we must always round to the least number of decimal places. Let's do an example. 
Always start with identifying the number of decimal places each number has. This first number has one, two, three decimal places. The second number doesn't even have a decimal shown, so there are zero decimal places. And the third number has one, two decimal places. Next, determine what the least number of decimal places are. In this case, the second number has the least number of decimal places, which means our final answer will have zero decimal places. Now we'll add everything together and round up to 77. And this once again has no decimal places based on the least number of decimal places we found in the first step. When multiplying or dividing numbers, we must always round to the least number of significant figures. For this example, we will start with identifying how many significant figures each number has. The first number has three sig figs and the second number has four sig figs based off of rule one from our significant figure rules. Next, we'll multiply these numbers together to get this. And we will round to the least number of significant figures, which was three. So round up to 17.6. There are some questions that combine all of these operations together, but before we go over how to figure out the sig figs for these types of questions, it's important to review our basic order of operations or PEMDAS, where anything in parentheses is first, followed by exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction is last. I want you to try this question out right now based on what you remember from order of operations. All right, let's go over this together. We'll use PEMDAS to help us out. Start with parentheses first. So 16 plus two is 18. And this is the part that may have tricked a few people. According to PEMDAS, the next step is to divide, not add. 18 divided by three is six. And last step is to add the three. Our answer is nine. For those who said seven, you added first instead of dividing. So make sure to remember to use PEMDAS so you don't get the answer wrong. Let's do a more challenging question together. We will start with parentheses. So three times nine is 27. Now the question is, do we multiply or divide next? You would actually divide first. And yes, I know multiplication is before division, but whenever you have both operations, you will solve these going from left to right. So applying this, we will go from left to right. So divide first, then multiply after. 21 divided by three is seven. Next, we will multiply negative 27 times nine to get negative 243. Now the question is, do we add or subtract next? Same thing applies here. We will perform the operations going from left to right. So we will subtract first, then add. Seven minus 243 is negative 236. And now we will add, so negative 236 plus five is negative 231. Overall, the rules for order of operations is to start with parentheses first, then any exponents. Next is multiplying and dividing, going from left to right. And last is adding and subtracting, again, going from left to right. Now that you have order of operations down, let's see how this applies to chemistry, specifically significant figures. You'll need to remember order of operations and your sig fig rules for adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. For this example, start with order of operations, where parentheses are first, and then we will subtract. But instead of just doing this, we need to account for our sig fig rules and we will round at the very end. So if we are multiplying, we want this to have the least number of sig figs. This first number has four sig figs and the second number has two sig figs. Since the least number of sig figs is two, we would have rounded to two sig figs after multiplying but you should always save rounding to the very end, so I will underline where this number should have stopped at, then bring down the rest of the problem. We no longer are multiplying, we are subtracting. Our sig fig rules have just changed to rounding to the least number of decimal places. Start with identifying how many decimal places each number has. For this first number, we are focusing on the underlined portion. We said that this number would have stopped at two sig figs from our previous multiplication rule. So there is only one decimal place and we would ignore the rest of this. The second number only has two decimal places. Subtract the entire number for each. Then round to the least number of decimal places, which is one. We'll round up to 0.3. Let's do another example. Start with parentheses first. We'll add these two numbers together to get this. 
Identify how many decimal places each number has. The first number has two decimal places, and the second number has three decimal places. Since we are rounding, we will need to underline where this number should have rounded to, which is the least number of decimal places. That would be two decimal places, so I will underline this four. Bring down the rest of this problem. Order of operations tells us to multiply and divide going from left to right. So we will multiply first. The sig fig rule for multiplication is to round to the least number of sig figs. This number has five sig figs and this number has four sig figs. Multiply the numbers together and underline where we would have rounded to the least number of sig figs, which is four. Last part of this is to divide. Our sig fig rule for division is to round to the least number of sig figs. Remember to focus on where we underlined each number and identify the least amount of sig figs. The first number has four sig figs based off of where we underlined, and the second number also has four sig figs based off of where we underlined. Divide both numbers entirely and then round up to four sig figs. Our answer is 1.631. Ready for those practice problems? Well, using the link in the description, you'll find the practice problems for this entire playlist with step-by-step -step video explanations. So try those out on your own, then come on back for the next video. All right, let's put in some work. Together, of course.